Thoroughbred Action is presented by Hardacre Farm. Well, we hope you're tied on, everybody. A hearty good evening and welcome to Thoroughbred Action on this Preakness Day edition here at Gulfstream Park. A little soggy here at GP, but it's all good as Jason Blewett catches up with you. Hope you had a great Preakness Day. Hope you did well at the windows. And in fact, we've got 12 races to bring you the old 12-pack on the show as we send it up the track announcer, Pete Aiello. Tons of rain both overnight and all day long here in South Florida. We're off the turf with the sloppy main track. First of 12 off the turf. Main track at five furlongs. Claimers in for $16,000. Scratch the four and six. The 10 draws in. Jose Bautista rides the seven Fergalicious. The favorites included the 10, Threat, and number one, Poopsie Doopsie. Racing at Gulfstream. Nola Fashion was a step slow. Poopsie Doopsie wins the break, but Talisa off the shelf has speed, and so does Misty Ballerina with Threat moving over from the top shelf. It's the outside three who cross over in the run to the far turn. Misty Ballerina, but Threat right up alongside, and these two fly. They've opened three on Talisa, who's back running in third. From fourth, Fergalicious ahead of Poopsie Doopsie. Then Schmiss and Nola Fashion, and Card Spun is last with five sixteenths to run. On the outside, Threat lays down the challenge to Misty Ballerina. They're a length and a half better than Fergalicious, who's running on a bit from third. Poopsie Doopsie is inside of Talisa, three clear of Schmiss, then comes Card Spun in Nola fashion, and they're at the top of the stretch. Misty Ballerina turns away threat, but now has to deal with Fergalicious on the outside. Poopsie Doopsie in the center of the race course with Talisa on the far outside. Schmiss getting on track late. Fergalicious strides to a clear advantage. Fergalicious now on top by two and a half. Talisa's trying to track her down on the outside. Fergalicious, Talisa, it's a photo finish. That got really close. Talisa put her mind to business late in the game, and photos with Fergalicious in 59 and one. Number seven, Fergalicious brings the upset. It's a pickup ride for Jose Bautista and she holds firm for the score. For trainer Yvonne Bellstor and Bruno Schickendanz. Eight, Talisa got on track late in the game and just missed while second ahead of the one Poopsie Doopsie who ran third. To the second race at seven furlongs over the main track made in special weight runners for a purse of $46,000. All eyes on number six, Smash Williams. And they're off. Smash Williams, we're very well away and right to the early lead. From between horses, that's all golden. Deputies are looking for position in tight as Moon Pistol and out the back door is Tiz Morning. So the big favorite, Smash Williams, with a hassle-free opening eighth of a mile. He leads the way three parts of a length over Deputy Czar, who's moving up toward the rail under Camacho to be second and neck in front of Moon Pistol third. At the fence, that's the mighty judge from fourth ahead of All Golden. And Tis Morning, three wide at the back of the group, as Smash Williams has him stacked and packed down the backstretch run. It's Smash Williams in front by a half a length. Deputy Czar toward the rail second. Up on the outside, it's Moon Pistol into the bit third. Back to fourth in the mighty judge ahead of Tiz Morning and All Golden is last. Around the far turn they go. Deputy Czar is secured inside position for Camacho, but Smash Williams still has the lead. Three wide. Moon Pistol getting started from third. Up on the outside, that's Tiz Morning in fourth. Back to fifth, the mighty judge. All golden tails off as Smash Williams now put to the test. Quarter of a mile left to go. Smash Williams off the turn with the lead. Toward the inside, Deputy Czar tries to stay on second. Tiz Morning swung to the center to punch home from third with an eighth of a mile to go. Smash Williams has the lead. Deputy Czar to the inside over the top tis morning three chances here tis morning getting to smash williams deputies are toward the rail deputies are trying to get to smash williams who fights on and smash williams gets the goal line stand goal deputy czar was second tis morning was third and then the mighty judge in 124 and four well it wasn't easy but number six smash williams wins a close photo in today's second race as the big favorite Edgar Zayas carried the son of more than ready home in that final eighth of a mile for Todd Pletcher and owners Let's Go Stable and Stone Street Stables. Second three, Deputy Czar in a good try ahead of the two, Tiz Morning getting up for third. Time for a commercial timeout. A lot of action left right after this. Welcome to my
Back now for the third race of the afternoon. Six furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of 12500 Lionel Reyes on four. Cantaclaro scratched the six. Midway Playa. Favorites were three. Squadron A and seven. Trev. And they're off. Trev hops slightly at the start and is last to begin, but not by very far. Tiger Blood now hits the lead, but there goes Trev. He finds his feet and accelerates to a clear advantage. Tiger Blood is now second. Horner Man is third from between horses. Fifth Avenue Flash, then Canta Claro. And the veteran Squadron A is last of all behind the speed of Trev. Trev pushes the pedal to the metal past the half mile point and opens a four length lead on Tiger Blood second. Horner Man is third. Fifth Avenue Flash is fourth. Then Canta Claro and Squadron A. 22 seconds for the opening quarter speed. There's three furlongs left to go. It's Trev on top by four. Tiger Blood trying to take up the slack. Second, Horner Man driven, not responding. Cantaclaro set down for the drive under Lionel Reyes. Starts to gain a bit of ground, too. Cantaclaro's about six lengths behind ahead of Squadron A. Fifth Avenue Flash calls it an afternoon through a 45 and one half mile. They're at the top of the stretch. Trev and Relu Gutierrez turn for home with a four length lead. Tiger Blood is game and trying to make some ground, but nobody's making ground on Trev now. Trev broke a step slow, but wins anyway, and he wins with no serious dangers. It's Trev in front. Tiger Blood's going to hold on for second. Corner man third. The veteran Trev too fast and just enjoys the slop too much as he goes gate to wire in a never threatened moment. Relu Gutierrez on board the son of exclusive quality for trainer Ralph Zady and the Rast Aster Ace group. Second number one, Tiger Blood. Third was number five, Corner Man. Trev, a gate to wire winner to start a pick three. We'll move now to the fourth race off the turf main track at seven furlongs. Claimers in for $16,000. Scratch the four and seven. Carlos Montalvo rides the eight. Admiral Jimmy, a field of seven. Lukewarm choice, number five, King Wildcat. And they're off. From the outside, Ed's dog ridden hard with Bodie Dog away with speed. So the two dogs go after the early lead. Admiral Jimmy and Jackism third and fourth. The three at the back, King Wildcat, Fast Fact, and Snoring Barth. They make their way down the backstretch, and it's Bodie Dog and Joe Barrios who come away with the advantage. Up on the inside, Jackism is now trying to secure rail running, and up on the outside, Ed's Dog is now third. From the far outside, King Wildcat claims fourth ahead of Admiral Jimmy and Fast Fact with Snoring Barth at the back of the group as they race to the final half mile. Inside position secured for Jackism, and Jackism has the lead. It's Jackism in front to length and a quarter. On the outside, Ed's Dog is now second. Racing up on the far outside is King Wildcat. King Wildcat has some momentum. He's looking pretty well. Starting to move in here as they run to the final three furlongs. It's still Jackism with, for, with the lead. On the outside, King Wildcat, Ed's dog from between horses. Then it's a length and a half to Snoring Barth, driven at the rail as fast fact with a quarter of a mile left to go. They went 46 and two for the opening half mile. Jackism has the lead, but he's under siege. King Wildcat, the big horse, unleashing a rally on the outside second. Three back to Snoring Barth, third with an eighth of a mile left to go. King Wildcat has now overhauled the second horse, Jackism. Three lengths clear of Snoring Barth in third, up the inside and fast fact. King Wildcat edging away. He's too good. He's nine to five, and he's a winner. He's King Wildcat to beat a game. Jackism, who stays on for second. Admiral Jimmy rolls home for third. Fourth was fast fact, and then Snoring Barth. If you looked on form, you'd see only two horses had any affinity for the main track in today's fourth race. If you were wise to that, you cashed a $28 exact as number five, King Wildcat, comes home a winner right off the claim for Gilberto Zerpa, who excels in that category. Amisai El Jaramillo on board for GV21 Entertainment. The fifth race of the afternoon was the Saturday feature race at the start of the middle pick four, the musical romance stakes for Florida Breads at seven furlongs. Scratch number seven, Magali. Favorites were four, Stormy and Brace, and five, Our Angel, Caitlin. And they're off of the musical romance thing. Our Angel, Caitlin, away excellent. So was Sweet Tooth Haven, and the two outside horses move ahead of Surprise Wedding. So Stormy and Brace knifing between horses, and on the move with Sophie Germain right there. Yes, I'll go, finds herself last of all as they run down the back stretch. Three horses across the course. From the inside, our Angel Caitlin leads Stormy and Brace narrowly. Sweet Tooth Haven in the black and red on the outside. Third, Sophie Germain is back fourth. Two back to fifth in surprise wedding, racing about four lengths off the lead for Juarez and four clear of Yes, I'll Go. 
past the half mile and moving to the far turn. Our Angel Caitlin with pace pressure from Stormy Embrace, who's led out a notch by Wilmer Garcia, moving up to be second. From the outside, Sweet Tooth Haven is now third into a pocket run, surprise wedding fourth. She'll look to angle for racing room ahead of Sophie Germain with Yes, I'll Go through a 45 and one opening half mile. Stormy Embrace comes away with the lead. Sweet Tooth Haven up on the outside, tries to get to her second into the clear surprise wedding. It's going to be four wide with some momentum. That's all for our Angel Caitlin, and they're at the top of the stretch. Stormy Embrace toward the inside, toward the outside. Sweet Tooth Haven lays down the challenge. These two, three lengths ahead of our Angel Caitlin with an eighth of a mile left to go. Toward the inside, Stormy Embrace to the outside. Sweet Tooth Haven takes another run at her. Stormy Embrace and Sweet Tooth Haven. These two, Sweet Tooth Haven and Stormy Embrace. Stormy Embrace, the rider stood up. The rider stood up, but Stormy Embrace wins anyway. Wilmer Garcia stood up at the first finish line, but it didn't cost him the win as Stormy Embrace gets the money over Sweet Tooth Haven in 124 and one. Some interesting moments in the deep stretch part of today's feature race as jockey Wilmer Garcia stood up at the first finish line. Amazingly, it cost his Philly Stormy Embrace no momentum and he still got the victory aboard the daughter of Circular Key who prevails gamely for trainer Brian Smeek and owners Matt Talona Thoroughbreds. Number six, Sweet Tooth Haven had the door open wide for her inside the 16th pole, but she could not get up. She was second ahead of the one Yes, I'll Go, who was a troubled trip and ended up third. On now to race number six of the afternoon off the turf on the main track at seven furlongs. Claimers in for $10,000. Scratch the three, four, seven, nine, 12, and 15. Jonathan Gonzalez on the 14, appealing Lolly Vella. Off-time favorites included the eight, Inside Trip, and number 13, Sip My Chardonnay Day. And they're off. Sister drama was off a little awkwardly. Far outside, Miss Lotus Flower is being sent for speed. Pika Ballerina has some foot, and so does appealing Lolly Bella with Sip My Chardonnay. Freckle to Freck, an inside trip not far away as they scrimmage for the early lead. It will be Pika Ballerina and Alvarado Jr. to lead narrowly. Up on the outside, Sip My Chardonnay now second. Freckle to Freck is third, appealing Lolly Bella is in step with inside trip. Tapping on the brakes was Freckle to Freck as Sister Drama moves into traffic. Far outside, Miss Lotus Flower, three better than Trini Pleasure and Taco Wayne shot. And Flamenco Tiger out the back door early through the opening quarter in 23 seconds even. Into the forward turn they go. Pika Ballerina leads by an X. Sip my Chardonnay. On the outside is second. Sister Drama runs on from third around inside trip. Appealing Lolly Bella is going to have to do better than that. Two and a half lengths back to Miss Lotus Flower. In between horses, Freckle to Freck alongside Trini Pleasure as they run to the top of the stretch. Sip my Chardonnay. Let out a notch here by jockey Edgar Zayas and gets away by two. Sister Drama is the stretch danger from second. Well clear of the others. Appealing Lolly Bella and Trini Pleasure for minor shares. And the wrap the top of the stretch. Sip my Chardonnay trying to hold off Sister Drama who's right there on the outside. These two with an eighth of a mile to go. Sister Drama unleashing the bit at the leader. Sip my Chardonnay. Sip my Chardonnay digging in, finding a bit more. Sister Drama just can't get by. Sip my Chardonnay. Sister Drama was second. Up third was appealing Lolly Bella, then Taco Wayne shot. Number 13, Sip My Chardonnay ran absolutely atrocious in her most recent effort, but she reverses her form here this afternoon, getting back to her preferred footing of the main track at one turn on Gulfstream Park. Edgar Zayas kicked the daughter of Bodie Meister into another gear inside that final furlong to get the victory for owner trainer Jose Jimenez. Time for a commercial timeout. When we come back, we'll bring you the Rainbow Six sequence, made in claimers over the main track right after this. And Go Zipper is pulling away. Zephyr blows them away with an eye-opening performance. Odds of again has won. Go Zephyr kicking clear. Judy the beauty. We're back now for race number seven of the afternoon. The start of today's Rainbow Six. Maiden Claimers in at one mile for a $10,000 price tag. A field of nine signed on. Off-time favorite was the five, Rider of the Blue. And they're off. From the center, that's home power who begins well. Enduring arch has speed, El Zeus. 
going to mix it up in the early stages. And Mr. Spike from the inside at the rail, Dixie Mambo. So Dixie Mambo sent hard by Donis to try to get position with Mr. Spike and Camacho right alongside. They're a length and a half better than El Zeus, who's out of their third. For um, between horses, home power now moves to the outside of a half gray. Down inside, Elastico. Then back to the favorite rider of the blue, last of the main body. Four clear of Russian wine and enduring arch. They make their way down the back stretch. The opening quarter was aggressive, 23 and two as they head to the final half mile. The leader is Mr. Spike in the two path, Dixie Mambo right alongside. Third is El Zeus to the outside home power, fourth and Asta Quicken already. Then back to half gray and on his inside, Elastico. Stretch of five, Rider of the Blue. At this point, he's doing no running of any kind. Passed by Enduring Arch, who's at the back of the group with Russian wine alongside. The upset possibilities are plentiful here as they round the far turn with the advantage now Three wide, here's El Zeus and Eddie Nunez issuing the challenge to Mr. Spike. Dixie Mambo is all in. Elastico has a shot from there. Three back to home power. He's just at kind of a one pace. Enduring Arch tries to rally from last, and they're at the top of the stretch. Three quarters, one twelve and three, and they turn in. Mr. Spike to the inside. El Zeus up and on the outside, and Elastico charging hard now. With an eighth of a mile to go, Mr. Spike put to pressure by Camacho, but he has the lead. On the outside, El Zeus takes another run at him, but Elastico looks to pick up the top two and he is here's elastico on the outside and elastico is up to win it second mr spike third el zeus then enduring arch and dixie mambo number five rider of the blue and number six home power ran second and third respectively in their most recent efforts their efforts were not duplicated here today as the upset was on in the form of number four elastico who was beat by both of those aforementioned rivals. He turns the tables on them and everybody else, winning at 12 to one under Miguel Vasquez for Kiko D'Angelo and the D'Angelo Stable. To the eighth race now on the start of today's late pick five, claimers at six furlongs in for a price tag of $6,250. Scratch the one, McManaman, Luca Panici rides number two, Trey's Midnight Moon. We had a power surge prior to the running of this race. We'll pick it up in progress. Coming to the finish, Chase Your Dreams has the lead. Trey's Midnight Moon is second. The favorite dreaming of JoJo unseated the rider. Chase Your Dreams wins. Going around the far turn, it was a three-way go. Number six, Chase Your Dreams was widest of those three. Put away dreaming of JoJo, who subsequently clipped heels and unseated the rider. Chase Your Dreams kicked on for the score to beat Trey's Midnight Moon, who was second ahead of the eight secret lifestyle. A big price getting up for third. We're on now to race number nine of the afternoon, the start of today's late pick four. A mile and a 16th over the main track. Scratch the one, four, five, seven, 13, and 15. This was a wide open betting race. And they're off. From between horses, Little Christian was away well far outside. Jumpin' James is gonna be spun about 10 wide while he tries to work over. In between horses, Mason Song is away in the top flight. And so as hope is rising with Roble Cayayano, as the far outside was definitely an imp impediment for Jumpin' James, but he will get to the top. Jumpin' James now leads the boy by two from Little Christian second, Motatan third. Mason Song is at the inside, a neck in front of Roble Cayayano, a gap of three to see or no. Then comes hope is rising. Moreno Mojo between horses with get a move on it. And then it's another about six or seven lengths back to the trailer. The trailer is Kid's Kid. 24 and one for the opening quarter speed. Jumpin' James has the lead by two. Roble Cayayano splits horses to be a joint second at the rail, Mason Song. Three wide and Little Christian. Gap of four, Motatan not really responding already. He's a length and a half in front of C or No. Then Moreno Mojo with get a move on it. Out wide on the course as hope is rising and still far back to Kid's Kid. They move inside half a mile away. First finish line in use. Mason Song gets through on the inside of the leader, Jumpin' James, who's not the leader anymore, as Mason Song now takes the lead by a neck. Jumpin' James is second. Little Christian is third. Trying to run home from the back is Moreno Mojo. Get a move on. It's going to swing five wide as they run to the top of the stretch. It's Mason Song with the advantage. Leads it by two. Jumpin' James is all in. Get a move on it. Doing just that with Moreno Mojo at the rail. Mason Song has work to do. After three quarters, they turn for home. Mason Song still there. Get a move on it on the outside. Moreno Mojo stopped cold or trying to alter course with less than an eighth of a mile to go. Get a move on it. Strides to a clear advantage. Mason Song is second. Moreno Mojo on the outside. It's get a move on it. He got a move on it, and he won it by three in the end. Mason Song second. Moreno Mojo third. And Kid's Kid from another country code got up for fourth in 147 and three.
Number two, get a move on it. Has never really performed that well on a main track, but there was a first time for everything, and the son of Get Stormy rolls home on a stormy afternoon in South Florida, giving Jose Bautista his second winner of the day for trainer Larry Pilati and the owner and breeders, the Merrylegs Farm. To the 10th race now on the start of today's late pick three, maiden special weight runners at six furlongs, three and up Phillies and Mares. Scratch number eight, Bristol's Brook, a field of seven. Favorites were five, Shanghai Shuffle, and seven, Bring Joy. And they're off. From the inside, Tropic Like It's Hot is away well. Moving up now, Grand Tap off the top to challenge and take over. From the outside, Bring Joy away much smoother today, and she'll take a good tracking spot while under a hold. Tropic Like It's Hot won the start but settles third, helping Lisa Diaz fourth ahead of Shanghai Shuffle in fifth. Then comes Tegla and Ginger Red. Down the back stretch and past the half mile pole. Up on the outside, Bring Joy traveling awfully well early in the contest as Grand Tap tries to hold off that rally. Two back to helping Lisa D, worked on by Mav Miguel Vasquez third. A neck in front of Tropic like it's hot. Shanghai Shuffle put to the Camacho stick and not doing much running. A length in front of Ginger Red, then comes Tegla as they round the far turn. It's Bring Joy on the outside who's now overhauled the leaders. Try a Grand Tap from the outside, helping Lisa D. Swung into action by Miguel Vasquez. She's a big time player now. Now as they straighten for home. Bring Joy has the lead. She better quicken as helping Lisa D has all the momentum. And helping Lisa D travels very well at the eighth pole. In fact, she's gone. Third start of her career, a winning one. It's Steve Dwoskin. It's Miguel Vasquez. It's helping Lisa D humbling the competition. She'll win as much as she wants. Six or seven in the end. Bring Joy was second. Tegla runs on for third. Then Grand Tap in 111 and 2. If you're a regular watcher of this telecast and follow South Florida Racing, you'll know that trainer Steve Dwoskin races his horses into shape, so they do improve from start to start. If you knew that, you probably cashed a number six, helping Lisa D, who was an easy winner, running up the score inside the final furlong, getting her third career start, a winning one for trainer Steve Dwoskin, who also owns the daughter of Flat Out, Miguel Vasquez, on board for the winning ride. Time for a commercial timeout. Still to come, the late Daily Double, right after this. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded by Amy Tarrant, owner, breeder, and trainer, Hardacre Farm, based in Ocala, continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm. From the breeding shed to the racetrack. In pursuit of producing the best. OBS June, the two-year-old source, OBS two-year-old sales grads win at the rate of two stakes a week. June saw graduate Stormy Liberal defeated the world's best in the Grade 1 Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Another June sale grad, seeking the soul, captured the Grade 1 Clark Handicap. The OBS June sale is your final opportunity to acquire a promising two-year-old with stakes potential. Under TAC previews begin June 7th. OBS, we measure success by performance. Back now for race number 11 of the afternoon. First half of the late daily double off the turf at seven furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for 12,500. Scratch the four, six, seven, eight, nine, 11, and 16. Favorites included five, Tale of Fancy, and 15, and Indian Scout. From the center, Tale of Fancy gets the first call. Indian Scout has speed and dreaming of Frank C now coming to challenge. Crazy Frank C and Indian Scout land one, two. Tale of Fancy makes it a party. Settling in fourth is Road Warrior Max ahead of King Hood. Then comes Night Rhythm and R. Sarge out the back door early. Island Therapy and just as outside is Unspoken Quality. Down the back stretch they run to the 5 8 mark. Indian Scout leads the way a half a length under Alvarado Jr. He's got a nice long hold of him toward the inside and Crazy Frank C second, Tale of Fancy third. From the outside here is Night Rhythm in the red colors moving around Road Warrior Max. R Sarge will have to angle off that flank of that rival through a 23 second opening quarter speed. Then back at the inside, King Hood ahead of Unspoken Quality. Island Therapy is last and the leader is still Indian Scout. Indian Scout to the top of the stretch leads the way by two. Second is Crazy Frank C driven third, Tale of Fancy toward the rail and R Sarge trying to put in a charge. Outside of him and Night Rhythm just kind of at a one pace here through an opening half mile and 46 seconds flat. Indian Scout has kicked it in. Indian Scout off the top of the turn opens a seven length lead now. Crazy Frank C, Tale of Fancy, then R Sarge. No good as Night Rhythm out wide as Island Therapy. But if you backed Indian Scout, you're very happy. Indian Scout left alone up front and will take them all the way under jockey Roberto Alvarado Jr. Indian Scout by five in the end. 
Taylor Fancy second, Crazy Frank C third. Fourth was R. Sarge ahead of unspoken quality at 123 and four. Too much speed and too much class in the corner of Indian Scout, who breaks well from his outside gate, gets a great trip, and goes all the way under Roberto Alvarado Jr. Returner Tammy Levy in the IAB stables. Second five, Taylor Fancy ahead of the 12, Crazy Frank C, who ran third. To the 12th and final race, six furlongs over the main track. Claimers in for a price tag of $6,250. Marcos Manessis on number six, T and Cricket. The favorite was the seven, Dream Saturday. And runners away. Cotton Colors from the far outside begins well. Sonido is being sent along to try to get the lead. Horse spotter Carl and Mr. Baker have speed. Away in fifth is T and Cricket. They're followed by Amase. Down inside Starship Apache. Then the favorite Dream Saturday, who's out in the center of the course for Ray Lou. At the back door early is Pear Pear Tie and the Sun Wind. It's a spirited early pace as Camacho takes hold of Sonido past the half mile and leads the way by an neck. On the outside, that's uh, Cotton Colors in second. Down inside, Mr. Baker's got horse, and he saves ground toward the rail, and he's now up the challenge for the lead. Racing in fourth and trying to run on horse spotter Carl. Fifth out wide, T and Cricket. Dream Saturday, um, the polar opposite trip of last time. They'll have to go six or seven wide. Then back to the inside, and the Sun Wind trying to close ground with a quarter of a mile left to go. Sonido back for more and now has the lead again to the attack and Dream Saturday. He's on a roll. Back to third and T and Cricket. Cotton Colors has been pulled up, and they're less than an eighth of a mile to go. Sonido set down for the drive on the outside. Here's Dream Saturday taking a late run at him second. Back to third tee in cricket. They come to the wire. Here's Dream Saturday overhauling Sonido. It's Dream Saturday to do it. Sonido was second. Up third was the Sun Wind and then the Masse fourth in 111 flat. Number seven, Dream Saturday never left the rail last time, running down all the horses in the stretch run. Today, he never saw the rail as he was wide every step of the way. The result was the same, though, as the son of any given Saturday relishes the off track. Kicks by Sonido to get the victory under Relu Gutierrez for GDS Racing and Gustavo Delgado. Gustavo on fire right now. Carry over in the super high five going into tomorrow's program of just less than $3,000. We will have a Rainbow Six carryover as well. The Rainbow Six lives to fight another day. Worth more than 8000 on today's card. The carryover going into tomorrow's card, more than $40,000. And that'll do it. Another 12-pack, a 12-race card in the books here at Gulfstream Park. Two-thirds of the Triple Crown in the books as well. We'll set our sights 20 days from now on the Belmont Stakes and certainly set our sights on the Sunday card here at Gulfstream. We have a first race post, 11 races in all, and that first race post, 1.15 p.m. Good night, everybody. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Hit the hay. 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 Well, I'm tired. Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired.